Hey and welcome back to another Darkfall tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at how to add some camera shake to our movie clips. So if you followed along in the Star Wars Lightspeed effect, you can use that result now and add a bit of camera shake to it. Uh, you can see the difference between with and without camera shake, I think it helps sell the scene a little bit better. So the first thing we want to do is align the camera, so press number pad 1 and then control alt number pad 0. Then we want to shift A and what we want to do is add uh, images as planes. So if you've not got this add on here, what we need to do is just enable it. So let's go over here to file, user preferences, and then select add ons, and then let's search for images. There we go. So I've already got it selected, so you just want to check that. And it's, an, it's this very useful add on to have, so I keep it around. If you want to keep it around, just hit save user settings, so you don't need to do that ever again. So now if we shift A, we can go down to images as planes, and I'm going to load in a movie clip. Um, what you will need to remember if you want to use this in the future, if you're loading in, say, a PNG image, you want to check Use Alpha, uh, otherwise it won't use the transparency. Also, the material, right now it's set as Diffuse, but if you want to bring it as an emission, then you can do that as well. But I'm going to leave it as Diffuse for now. Okay, so now we want to rotate this by pressing R, then X, then 9-0. Let's come down here to the material, the viewport shading, and we want to change it to either texture or material, either one will work. We want to scale this up bigger than, uh, so it's bigger than the camera, because we're going to be shaking it, so obviously we don't want it to go outside the border. And the, if you want to scale it up, depending on how much uh, shake you want to give it, so the more shake you give it, the bigger you scale it up. Okay, so that should be fine for now. Um, when we scrub through this, we should really see it updating. Um, so if we give this a render now. So obviously let's pick a different uh, frame, let's render that again. And we still don't see anything new. And that's because we need to come over here to the materials. And you can see it's just using it as a single image. And we just need to change that, which is not hard. So we can just change this window. And we just want to choose Node Editor. And we can see this node here, this image node, everything else is fine, color, linear, flat, repeat, mover, that's fine. We just want to increase the amount of frames. So I know this has got, say, around 600 frames, so we can just increase this to, say, well, let's just say 632, should be fine. Let's just let's render this now, and we can see it's changed, that's fine, because it's now using it as a movie clip rather than a single image. So you just want to check them settings, make sure everything's fine. You also want to make sure there's no offset and auto refresh that's fine change this back to 3d view so now when we scrub through this we need to have the uh, material selected so it can update so it's not very accurate um, but you do get an idea of what it looks like let's just set the end frame now to say 600 okay so we want to add some camera shake to this Yeah, well, we've got the camera selected, we just want to split the window. And we want to change this from the 3D view to the graph editor. Let's just move this a little bit. Okay, so since we're at the first frame, we would just want to press I to add a keyframe, and we want to set it for the location. And then without moving anything, we just want to jump to the last frame. And then again, press I. And for the location. Now there's nothing changed in the v uh, in the 3D viewport. But as you can see at the top there, there's um, two little dots. So there for the, uh, the keyframes that we just set. As you can see, since we've got the camera selected, it shows the camera action. And since we set a keyframe for the location, the X, Y, and Z, there's no movement. We actually want to set movement for the X. If we look down here, since we set the camera to the front view, X is going to be left and right, and the Z is going to be the up and down. So they're the only two um, locations that we want to change. So it's the X and the Z. The Y we don't actually need at all. So we can start with the X first, with the X selected. We want to press N to bring up the toolbar, uh, the properties bar. And we want to select from, well, we want to change it from F curve to modifiers. And we actually want to give this a modifier. And the modifier we want to give it is noise. Okay, so already you can see if you scrub through here, you can see it's had a bit of shake to it. It's just left and right. 
and we can change this in a minute but we also want to limit the uh, the shake so just drag this out a bit so you can see it a little bit better before we change anything let's just restrict the frame rate we don't want it to start from the beginning we want it to start maybe after one second so if you're working in 25 frames per second so just change it to 25 the end frame we don't want it to end at 600 we want it to end after the 600 so it doesn't slow down so let's just say 650 so now let's try this we see that it starts after say one second and then it just shakes from the beginning okay so what we also want to do is have like a build up time I said maybe that's a bit too short let's add a little bit make it a little bit longer let's say 30 frames again this is all down to you when you want it to start but we also want it to build up so this is where this in and out comes in the sort of like a fade in and fade out so let's just set this to say 80 so between frames 30 and 80 it's going to start building up so that looks fine let's just zoom in here so you can see it a little bit better so there let's jump to the first frame you see there's no movement here and then when the or, uh, when the red line starts to get bigger the movement becomes bigger as well so I'm just going to make you maybe change this to 100 let's see that so the amount of shake you put on it is, is entirely up to you if you want to put more shake or less then we can change that in a moment let's just play this through so it slowly builds up and then stays at a constant speed which is fine so let's just change this now this scale uh, moves it along this line so it maybe speeds it up and slows it down we don't want to mess with the scale we can increase the strength of it so you can see these spikes are getting stronger now so it shakes more violently and again if you do make it violent shakes you want to make sure the background plane is scaled up a bit more see so I'm going to set this to maybe 1.3 leave the rest of these for now so now we've done the uh, X we can do the Z so all we have to do is come here to the top and press this button so we can copy it to the clipboard and then if we select the Z location and then press the paste so now it's exactly the same just in the Z rather than the X now you don't want it to be the exact same you do want to change the offset um, I also want to reduce the scale maybe uh, sorry reduce the strength a little bit we can play this through, see how it looks. Okay, so when you scrub it up, Blender's just stopped. So yeah, make sure you um, you save it a lot, otherwise it might crash like it did then. I've just had to start again. Um, so yeah, make sure you save it a lot. Okay, so when you're happy with this, the shake of the camera. Now we can go ahead and render it. Let's just change it from the 3D view to the node editor. And we want to change this to the scene tab. Use nodes and backdrop. Let's just move these out of the way. You don't need the vignette for now. Okay, so if we press Control, Shift, and left click on this, we can add a viewer node. Let's give this a render so we see what we're working with. Okay, it's probably a bad frame to pick since there's no movement, there's no colors. So I'm probably going to just re-render this on a different frame. Let's pick um, some over here, maybe. Let's render this. Okay. Okay, so now what I want to do is just add a Shift A, add a color, RGB curves. It's not really a tutorial about compositing, this is just going to give you a quick uh, filmic look, I guess. <clears throat> so with the uh, RGB curves, I'm just going to give it an S-curve. Keep playing around with this until I find something I like. And then just change it to the blue value and increase that a little bit. Then switch it over here to the Scene tab. Down under Color Management, we're going to just change this now to make it look a bit more filmic. So under Color so under render view, let's change this from default to film. And as soon as you do that, you can see a lot of it gets washed away. So you want to play with the exposure and gamma. So since a lot of it's got washed away, you just want to increase this exposure and gamma value there. And uh, play with it until you get something you like. But 
Then make sure you re-render it on a different frame to see how that looks as well. Because every time you make a change on one frame, you want to make sure how it looks on the other frame as well. So yeah, just keep adding a few more uh, nodes as you want. I mean, I think that looks fine for now for this example. Um, but if you want to keep adding more nodes, just add on, just keep going. But let's say you're happy with that and we just want to render this out. So let's change the frame rate to be 25. And we want to change this uh, file type to H.264. And if you've got some audio, you want to just make sure you add the audio encoding. So down here under audio codec, you just want to choose, say, maybe MP3. But since I haven't got any audio on this, I don't, ha don't need to do that. Now, when it comes to samples, you might be um, tempted to just ramp this up to, say, 200 and give that a render. Okay, so if I press number two on the keyboard, I can show to change it to slot two, and I'll show you the difference. So we're just going to re-render this. So I'll just press one and two on the keyboard and switch between them both, and you can see there's literally no difference in the quality. So you can see between one and two, there's there's no difference. The only difference is actually the time. So between forty frames, uh, forty seconds per frame, or five seconds per frame. So. So you can just leave that at 10 samples. You also set the output and where you want to save this. And then you can go ahead and animate. So this was a quick camera shake tutorial. Hopefully it helped. Um, if it did, be sure to give it a like. Yeah, so thanks for watching.